with me know how did you start diving and what did you like the most when you started diving? When I was growing up, I lived a little while in, I lived in abroad when, because of my dad's work. So I grew up, I uh, spent my teenage years in Japan, for example. And uh, also when I was a child, I lived in Africa, in Nigeria. So I had seen quite a lot of the world. And then I came back to the UK, I went to university, blah, 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 I got a job, house, and then realized I was really bored. And I, I needed to go on holiday. And I didn't want to just go on holiday and sit on a beach and do nothing. I wanted to do something. Uh, but I did not know what. So I went to, I was just walking, I went to a local travel agent and I saw the brochure. It was uh, open water course, flights, hotels, everything included, Sharm El Sheikh, really great price. And it was like, boom. Uh, it was, it, uh, I think I said once, it's like, the, it's like the, it jumped off the shelf and attacked me. And um, so I kind of thought about it for a week and I could think of nothing else. I tried to look at other options, uh, but then in, in, 20 years ago, so December 2000, I find myself in Sharm El Sheikh walking into the water in Nama Bay. I never really left, I think. Uh, so that, that, that was the start and it became the, the one thing I became most passionate about. I uh, was at that one time doing my open water course um, with a dive center in, in Charm. And I just, I completely fell in love with, with diving and the Red Sea. It was, it was uh, wonderful. Um, so that, that's where it all began. <clears throat> cool. And what was the, the reason to decide, okay, now I'm a diver, I like diving, but now I also would like to teach. Uh, it was also Sharm El Sheikh. <laughs> I, I did. So I dived for a few years. I dived for four years. I went to Sharm again a few times. I went to Alguna a couple of times. I went to Gozo in Malta. Uh, but then in, in, in 2004, so it was, it was just one of those times that everything was really perfect. The diving was great. Uh, I went to uh, the Thistlecorn for the first time, which, which, which is uh, my favorite dive ever. And it was, it was a great day. It was beautiful. There was no current. It was blue, crystal, which it like, never is. <laughs> I realized many years later, it's so one time every six months. But it was just perfect. Uh, but also by this stage, I had like 60, 70 dives or so. So I was already starting to help other people in the water. So maybe there's one guy, he's a bit new and he's... Uh, having a uh, floating to the surface with his feet in the air so the instructor's busy somewhere else so I can help and deflate his jacket a little bit so already I was starting to help starting to give advice about this and, and I really liked it and one of the other instructors one of the guides on the boat really complimented me on that said thank you for your help have you ever thought about becoming a dive master <laughs> I was like, oh. So then I talked with my instructor about this and she was like, yeah, I think you'd be really good at doing it because you're helping people and you really like the diving and da, da, da. And then I spoke to some more people and they said, no, you need to do your IDC because then you'll have more opportunity. For da, da, da. And then on the last night of that trip, I went, I went out for drinks with my dive buddies and, and my instructor. Three o'clock in the morning in the tavern bar in Sharm El Sheikh uh, in October 2004, and then the next day, we're going back to the airport. Everybody's laughing at me, but I, 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 I couldn't get it out of my head. I, I, I just have to, it, the idea was stuck. And I thought, I have to, I have to do this now. Um, it was something that uh, I think was the, the first time I'd felt really passionate about wanting uh, or, or wanting to do something for a career. I had other hobbies. So, so I was really into motorcycles before that fast Japanese things. I wanted to dive. I wanted to dive for a living. I wanted to do that as my life. Uh, so I took, the, I took the time to do some research and then, then I, I sold my house and became a dive instructor. I, it just gives you an idea of how much it meant to me, uh, to us, to some of the people I know who've done this. It was, it was something that we were so passionate about. That what are the characteristics of a successful dive profession? The first thing you need to realize is that it's not a holiday, that it is a job. You have to be extremely committed. Uh, it can be very hard work, uh, you know, both physically and, and, and emotionally, sometimes mentally, it can be quite, it quite, can be very challenging actually. So you need to, you need to have this, you know, when we talk about commitment and passion for what you're doing, 
uh, and you do. You have to be. You have to have a, a huge amount of dedication to to do to become a dive, a successful dive professional. You need to have. You know, it, 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 there's a lot of characteristics you need to have or to develop. You know, obviously your ability to teach. You have to be quite sometimes quite firm with people. You have to have some authority, but also you have to be a really nice person. <laughs> Tourists are coming for holiday. And they want to be entertained. So if you stand up in front of a, a dive boat saying, okay, so today we are going to dive in Rasum Sid, and then we will go. <laughs> and then it's like you get the equivalent of rotten tomatoes being thrown at you. So, so there's all of these things. So you, but under, underneath all of that is that you have to have passion for what you are doing. I'm sure it applies to a lot of other jobs, but there's a, there's a lot of that sort of behind the scenes stuff that dive professionals do that the tourists never see. Uh, so that's where the dedication comes in because you, you, you will have to, you know, commit to, to a lot of things in order to sort of live the dream as it were. So I think that's something that, that, that you know, you, you have to take on board. Uh, is is that it, it takes, it's not just like, you jump in the water and go swimming. It's, it's, it's a little bit more to it than that. But if you have the if you have the commitment, if you have the passion, then all the other stuff is it's not always easy, but it's you, you, you kind of learn to. Something came to my mind now. Um, if I'm already a dive professional, how can I improve? So what are the resources that I can gain information from, and I can actually grow in the career? Anything. Anything that you can get your hands on for reading or on the internet, videos, movies, books, whatever it is. I, there, there's, I think it applies to, in a broader sense to just life in general. Is that there is no need to stop learning. But for a dive professional also, I think it's very important you, you learn as much as you possibly can. So, for example, right now, or not right, you know, the last few years I've seen a big rise in technical diving particularly with people like SSI and Paddy are promoting the uh, DSAC tech rec. Because if Mares have just brought out a rebreather a couple of years ago, which is almost, um, what is it? Uh, Revo. Re yeah, the, well, the partnership with Revo. What is the model name? Uh, Horizon. Thank you, the journalist forgetting. Um, which is almost like a recreational rebreather. It's designed for, you know, put this on and, and go diving. Because of that, there's been a lot more exposure of recreational dive professionals to technical diving. And it, you speak to a lot of these people and they will say that, you know, I think that some technical knowledge should be part of the recreational divers, part of the IDC, or part of the training for a recreational dive professional. I'm not sure that it's, you know, it's difficult to say that it, it's necessary to actually become a recreational instructor, but I think that knowledge is important. Actually, so you, 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 you gain a bigger understanding of all aspects of diving because that can only help with your, the, the more basic aspects of, of recreational diving. So uh, having a good understanding of decompression theory for, for a start. In, in recreational diving, it's not really so relevant. You need to know about no decompression limits. You need to know about, obviously, decompression sickness and don't go too deep for too long. But in terms of gas planning and management in recreational diving, obviously that's very, it's quite straightforward. But having the, 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 the knowledge of the complexity of gas management in, in, in technical diving, I think, I think that's something that recreational instructors should know. But I think it's also when it comes to people having problems, not understanding, then you're able to explain to, to, to students and customers in more depth. But also it doesn't have to stop there. So we learn about the technical diving, we learn about physics, we learn about human physiology. So there are some great courses from Dan, for example, at the hazardous marine life injuries, uh, oxygen administration, even taking specialties from your own agency. So all of these things, I think, help to give you a broader range of knowledge as a as an instructor the short answer to your question is don't stop learning never stop learning uh, there's always something new uh, to, to study 
the dive industry is growing. We should look at is is managing the way that the that diving grows to ensure that it remains good for everybody, particularly the environment, because otherwise then there's we will no lose point. interest. <laughs> in, exactly. There's no point diving. Exactly. Um, so I mean, for me, I think that that is that is something that is of concern. And there are places which I know, you know, they're talking about how do we manage this? Well, maybe we should have on on Monday, we cannot go to this reef, and on Tuesday, we cannot go here. And, and we, so we rotate around the dive sites as much as possible. How do we do that in some places? You cannot say, oh no, so this week, we are not going to shark in your land. <laughs> you know, I think then you have a Revolution. Nobody will come diving in Sharm El Sheikh if you, <laughs> yeah, there'll be another revolution. Yeah, exactly. So, but how to manage that with maybe timing of boats and people and stuff? A difficult question. If you have the opportunity to develop either education or equipment uh, in the diving industry, what would be this development? I would bring back some of the uh, some of the material that was dropped. So I I learned my trade teaching dive masters about the. the physics and physiology, we have mathematics and equations. I mean, it was quite difficult to teach sometimes because sometimes I'm having to teach actually mathematics to dive master candidates. Um, but then it was taken away. And I think there was also an, a change to the, to the enriched air course. So they took, away the, they took away the mathematics and the calculations. So now the, I, I, I think that the enriched air course, for example, is just Okay, open your tank, put the analyzer, check, put in the <laughs> computer, takes 10 minutes. In, in, in practice, that's all you really need to do to analyze a tank as a recreational diver. Still, still some equations and some formulas are still existing. A, li a little bit, but, but it's not so, for, for, for a recreational diver, for somebody who's just diving every day, Put it here, check here, put in your computer. You know, we don't need to know a lot more than that. But for a dive professional, mm. I think we do. So I would like to see more of that knowledge put back into recreational training mm -hmm. uh, for the professional. As I was saying, I don't, I'm not sure if you know, recreational, uh, sorry, technical diving needs to be a, a major component of, of professional training. But there should be some encouragement. There should be some more in-depth knowledge available to for dive professionals. And I and I would like to see that. I would like to see you know the dive professional is not just somebody who is you know jumping up in front of the boat and hi everybody welcome to Sharm El Sheikh let's go diving woohoo it's somebody that has to be you know a much more knowledgeable person. And I, I, for me that's what I if if I if I had some input into training I would want to see more of that. I want to see more high-level knowledge imparted to to our recreational instructors for, for sure. Nice. Um, sometimes, sorry, I'm going. There, there's sometimes in, a, in in a lot of professions, but also in diving, there's like this. I'm a really experienced diver, and and go away, little open water person. There's, there's people get to like a, a certain number of dives and then oh, I, I know everything. And I think that's one of the things that, again, you have to unlearn for being an instructor is going back and saying, I know nothing. You have to have that a kind of it's a, a humility, I guess, to say that I'm yeah, not, I, may know, I know many things. I have many years of experience, but I don't know everything. Actually, uh, I believe in that the more you know, the more you know that you don't know a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, think, I, I think a lot of inst instructors go through that. I did when, when I was a new instructor. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. I'm an instructor. I know everything. You will do what I say. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think, and, you know, the English saying is I got, I got a bit too big for my boots. And then, but actually, I mean, I remember when I went, when I arrived in Sharm El Sheikh, for example, um, the, you know, one of, I, I had started working uh, for Sino Divers on a, on a recommendation of one of the other staff, who was a guy that I had trained. I had taught him his dive master course there, and I'm like the employee. <laughs> and, 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 but 
uh, equally, I said, I said, well, let me come and I will dive master for you. This guy that I've taught, I will dive master for you. You, if you can show me, you know, the way it works around here. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think that's quite important. Is to, you know, that's if you don't know something, you go back to the people who do. So maybe I'm diving for ten years and you are diving for three years, but you are diving in the Red Sea for two years, and I am only been ever been here on holiday before. Yeah. Um, so I think like that, that sort of thing, it's important for experienced Absolutely. divers to, 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 and professionals to, to put that over to, to the less experienced. Yeah. yeah. So Mark, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it was lovely talking to you, Karim.